Good day everyone, uh, back here for the last video today and this is the end of our chapter really. This is the last kind of part to this vector equation stuff. And to be honest, it, it's probably the hardest part. Uh, it's not so much the hardest part uh, uh, numerically, but just understanding what's going on. And, and this video, this video is more about getting your understanding than me doing the numbers. I'll do some of the numbers and show you where we're going, but it's about getting the understanding because with that understanding, you can knock through any of these questions. Now, there's three different ways you can do these questions. This is the first way, and I think that this makes more sense when you see it this way. So, what I want you to do is recognize this is only one of the ways, do some questions in that way, and then once you've sorted them, then come back and redo the same questions, but in a different method. Okay, they're all explained in the book and any book you can you can find them. Okay, so what am I doing here? Well, I've made this example up to make it nice and neat and simple. Now, simple because each of my particles are only moving in one axis. Okay, so this green one, see the color coding, is only moving vertically. It starts here and only moves this way. The red one starts here and only moves this way. So I'm kind of simplifying it so we can see it. But when we get over here, the numbers work out the same if we're, we're on different angles and whatever. So starting here at this point, moving this way at this speed. Starting here at this point, moving this way at this speed. Same details are here. This is what you get from the question. Now what I've done is I've kind of shown you what's happening time zero, time one, time two, because what we're trying to do is find when is the closest point between these two. These two particles are moving, when is the closest point? Now, let's put it in a practical context. Uh, if you're playing paintball, right, and you're gonna run this way, and you see someone running that way, at what point should you shoot at them so you're shooting over the smallest distance, and therefore you're more likely to be accurate? Now. Don't for a moment think that I go paintballing and go, wait, hang on, I'll just work that out. Wait, hang on, just hold a minute there, Sonny. Ah, of course not. But this can be used in lots of ways. So you want to find the closest distance. Perhaps uh, a boat's traveling this way um, and, and some, uh, some swimmer or someone fallen off a boat is floating that way and you want to know when should you launch the recovery craft. Because if you launch it here, you've got a long way to go. But if you wait till this gets closer, maybe this is a big tank or a big uh, ship, can't just stop and turn, uh, you want to launch the recovery craft about here because it's going to be the shortest distance to get there. So you've probably already seen this here and you're thinking, oh, I kind of get it. Follow the color coding, the green and the red. So that's at the initial start point, these two points here. And you can see I've worked out the distance there, which is from two to six, and the distance there from three to two. Now technically this is minus one. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to work out the distance anyway. Being that these are all at 90 degrees, or maybe not that one, uh, I can do a bit of Pythagoras. I come out with that, and I didn't work this out, but about 4.1, something like that. After one second, so this guy will have moved forward by four, so that'll be 6i plus 6j. And this one will have moved up, so it'll be 3i plus 4j. So the distance in the i's is going to be 3. The distance in the j's is going to be 2. 9, 4, square root of 13. Uh, about 3.3. So you can see the distance has gone down quite a lot. Okay. Then we do this one. This, by this time, it's moved up two lots. Two lots of that is 4. Added on to there, oh, I've made a mistake on here. No, I haven't, no, I'm good. Two lots of that is four, added on there is to six. So actually, after t equals two, we're here. So we're on that same line. But of course, this guy after two seconds has moved forward by eight, two lots of four. So two becomes eight. So now the difference between, oh no, I have made a mistake. Now the difference between three and where this would be at no, I haven't. Ah, oh, look, I'm, I'm doubting myself. Okay, start again. This has moved along by 8. So 2 plus the 8 makes it 10. This guy's at 3, so we're at 7. 7 is the difference. Um, square that square root, obviously it's not going to make any difference. 
So we start at 4.1, it's clearly getting less, and then it's getting greater. Now, if we keep going with this, because this is only going further away, and once this one goes past that point, it's only getting further away as well, I don't need to do any more than that. I'm sure that it's only going to get bigger and bigger. But somewhere in here, maybe one side or the other, somewhere in here is the smallest distance. I've written these up as R, A, R, B, which is just combining all this together with a lambda in here. You can use lambda, you can use T for time, it doesn't really matter. I've then rewritten it in this format in the I's and the J's. I've written them in separate components. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract one away from the other. And this is what we call the separation vector. So the separation vector is that bit of information that will tell me this or this or this. Okay, That's the separation vector. Where do I go from one to get to the other one at any particular point in time? Okay, So let's do this. So 3i minus 2i is going to leave me with i. No, no lambdas. It's 0 lambda minus 4 lambda is minus 4. Oh, sorry, that should be a 1. Lambda, lots of i. And then this one is going to be 2j minus 6j. 2j minus 6j is going to be minus 4. Put a plus in here. And then 2 lambda minus no lambda is going to be plus 2 lambda j. Just confirm that you like the look of that. I think we're pretty good there. So that's my separation vector. Now what I need to recognize, I'll get rid of this down here because we've got that up there. Now what I need to recognize is at any point in time, this is the equation that describes this. Okay. So if I want to find the actual distance of that, wouldn't I have to square this? So this separation vector, now because I don't really want to worry about negatives and positives, I'd take the absolute value of that. Right? Because separation vector, the direction doesn't matter. From here to there or there to there, same thing. Now, once I've got that, wouldn't I then say, well, RA minus RB, I'm going to call that D, the distance between the two points. And this is where I can say, well, why don't I square that and why don't I square that? Because if I square it, I'm going to get rid of the I's and J's. They're all going to fall away. So then, what am I going to end up with? Well, I'm going to end up with, let's multiply this out. Oh, this is going to be tricky. I'm not going to multiply it out. If you do this, you'll then be able to rearrange that equation into kind of y equals. And once you can get like y and x, it can be y and x or it can be d and lambda, it doesn't really matter. Once you do that, you'll end up with an equation that basically will come out as a quadratic. And once you've got that quadratic out, you can use your calculator to solve that guy. And once you use your calculator to solve that, you'll come out with an x value to get the minimum. Okay? And the x value to get the minimum, x is going to be the time at which you do it, and the y value is going to be the distance that is worked here. Okay? So rearrange that by squaring both sides. You'll end up with d squared equals, and then you can work from there. Hope this one's helped. Catch you later. Okay, so this is the first video that I've actually done some editing on. I worked this through a little bit and then I went, ah, I kind of left you hanging a little bit there. So I'm actually going to work this one rather than just leave you hanging. I think that's better. What I did here is I said, well, this here, RA minus RB, absolute value, that's really working out the distance here. Okay, so I'm going to say that D equals the absolute value of RA minus RB. And then from there, what I can do is I can say, well, d squared is going to get rid of this. Okay? So when I put this guy in there, really what I need to do is square that and square that. So d squared is going to equal, uh, now let's do this quickly, it's going to be 1 squared uh, minus 8. Now I'm going to change lambda to t, uh, plus 16 t squared plus uh, 16, uh, what have we got, uh, 8, 16, so minus 16t, and plus 4t squared. 
Right, tidy this up. What do we got? Uh, one, well, one squared is just one, so I can drop that out. 17, I'll write it the other way. Here we go, 20 T squared uh, minus 24 T and plus 17. Right, now that there is going to be a quadratic. Uh, and I should have come out with a negative in there. Why have I not come out with a negative? Uh, no, no, actually, no, no, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Because this here, just call that y for the moment, okay? And if you like, just change that to an x and that to an x. There you go. You've got now a quadratic equation. Now, that is going to look something like this. Now, I don't know exactly where it's going to be. It's going to have a y-intercept of 17. Let's call that there. It's going to be a positive quadratic, and it's going to be quite steep. So I'm going to guess that it will do something like that. Okay. Now, I'm a little step ahead here because I kind of know the answer somewhere in here. So I think the distance, remember y, is really d squared. So d squared is going to be getting really large really quickly as t goes along. So what I need to do here is recognize that uh, 0 is going to be there. 1 is probably going to be about there, 2 is going to be about there. And somewhere between 1 and 2, or might even be between 0 and 1, is going to be the minimum. So if you were to put that on your calculator and solve it, you would get x equal to, and of course you're letting this, uh, the derivative of this, equal 0. Okay? So what would we end up with? Let's change this back, hopefully this is on the screen, uh, 40x minus... 24 for the derivative, let it equal 0, so, oh gee, I'm running out of room here, uh, come on over here. So we've got uh, 24 equals 40x, therefore x equals 24 over 40. So 20 over 40, uh, what have we got, 6 goes into that 4 times, 6, no, 4, 4 will go into there 6 times and there 10 times. So 0 0.6, right, now, that's 0 0.6, what does that mean? Well, that means the minimum happens somewhere between here. So I'm going to adjust my diagram here, okay, and I'm going to say that uh, the minimum's got to be somewhere there, so that's going to be 1, and that's going to be 2, something like that. So the minimum, this point here, happens at 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Now, do I want to know what the distance is going to be? Of course I do. I can put 0 0.6 back into here, and I'll get y. Now, remember that y was d squared. So really, I need to get an answer from this, take the square root of it, and that will then tell me the separation distance that happens after 0 0.6 seconds, if you like, in this question. Hope this one makes sense. Uh, I thought I needed to do a little bit more here to show you all the way through. It can get really complex, but please, understand what you're doing. And then the process is exactly the same, even if these are heading off on different directions. You're just getting an equation, separation vector, and then doing some algebra to find when that is going to be the smallest. Hope this has helped. My first video that I've done some post-production on. Catch you later.